don't know who he is behind that mask of his, but I do know when we need him. And we need him now. Hello there, citizen. Batman here. I was just doing a little inventory of some of my uh, crime-fighting equipment. Hello again. Welcome back to another one of my how-to cosplay tutorials. And as you probably guessed, this time around we're looking at the 1966 TV Batman. So like a lot of people my age, I grew up with the television version of Batman being pretty much the only video, movie, TV version of Batman we had. Sure, in the 40s, there was a Batman movie serial, but in those days, unless you had access to a Super 8 film projector, you didn't get to see those movies at all. They sometimes ran late night, but unless you could stay up past midnight, there was no way. So for someone like me, who was born about the time the Adam West 1966 Batman TV show was in production, I saw these shows in the 70s, for the first time in the very early 70s. Also one of the first images I saw of the show were from the Viewmaster reels that were available even, even in the early 70s. A lot of stuff like the Aurora TV Batman model kits were still on sale in stores. Viewmaster kits were still on sale, the Corgi, Batmobile, Monkey Mobile, all those things were still on shelves, either just remaining or being closed out. What was interesting about seeing the Batman Viewmasters before seeing the show was, especially as a young kid, age six, you're seeing just the visuals. So you're seeing, wow, this Batman's very serious, he never smiles, he's in all these dark, He's on these dark sets and these dark situations. He's in catacombs. He's in dark museums in the middle of the night, ready to thwart the villain. The Batcave looks cool and dark, and the Batmobile. So there was no hint at the campy, wink-wink, nudge-nudge attitude of the show, especially when you're just seeing the visual aspects of it, which is what appealed to kids anyway. Adults got the jokes that were really included in the dialogue, not so much the visuals. So, of course, being a young, new Batman fan, who wouldn't love this? Plus, when I was growing up, my local New Jersey and Philadelphia stations would show two episodes, the cliffhangers, as one hour-long episode. So I was in heaven. It's Batman. It's in color, unlike that Superman show that they show from the 50s. And it's an hour long. Wonderful. What wasn't to love? And you know, Batman really did look like his then version. Batman really did look like how he appeared then in the comics. In fact, if you notice, costume designer, a man named Mr. Kemp, really paid attention to a lot of the 50s looks of Batman, the 50s Dick Sprang drawn look of the character, which was available then as part of reprints like the 80 page giants that Bill Dozier, Batman producer, and all those guys latched onto, especially when you look at Batman in profile. But anyway, a few years ago I decided, still new to cosplay, only having done a Captain America cosplay, really, I decided I was going to tackle the 60s Batman. So let's take a look at the costume right now by starting with what I first latched onto, which is a very good costume, but something I really would use to upgrade from, which is the commercially available Ruby's costume. Let's take a look at that particular Batman 66 costume before we get started. So here is the costume as it appeared in Ruby's catalog, looking very good on a very fit male model. The costume itself, as you're about to see in real life, was a little wanting. Nice belt. There's the sticker emblem. The gloves and cowl, as you can see, left a lot to be desired. The gray was a little light. 
So I really wanted to upgrade from this. This is where you see I use my own gray tights with a sticker emblem. Especially here, just compression tights. Not a bad costume for $100. I use that belt often afterwards, but that cowl especially had to go. So like I said, that was not a bad costume, especially for just being around $90. Great belt. Um, some of the things weren't so great about it, obviously, as you could see. But one of the first things I knew I'd have to upgrade was that cowl, that mask. And what I found on eBay was a company in China that makes very nice vinyl cowls like this. Very exacting to the Batman TV look. And these are the same people that make, or rather made, they're getting harder to find on eBay and sources like that. The Captain America mask I use for my Captain America cosplay. Now this is heavily modified, but it's the same thing. Very well done. Very nice masks. And these only, you know, were on eBay for like $20. Now the problem with this particular mask, you can probably see, sorry for that noise, is they're kind of small. As we're going to find out in a bit, a lot of these costume masks and cows are made bigger. The idea being like with t-shirts, anybody can wear an XL. Not everyone can wear an extra small. These are actually a little bit too small, even for my small head. And the problem here was, the problem with these smaller cows, and they do have some give, but let me show you what the problem was. As you can see, it fits quite snug, which is not a bad thing. But because these are a little bit small, they would tend to ride up a little high like this. And as you can see, I had some Velcro on here once upon a time. Once it closes, you still have this gap. You've got quite a big, big gap here at the neck. And how to solve that was, bear with me, I actually had a local seamstress make a neck yoke, which would wrap around the back. It would snap right about here. But anyway, here it is. I had her make a neck yoke like this. Of course, the cape would fit over this, keep it snug and pat. And not a bad job. But again, as you can see even here, these tend to ride up a little high. The nose peeks out. And the thing about these masks, both this one and the Captain America mask, is these are made fully licensed commercially overseas in Asia. Uh, you'll still see them on eBay and Amazon. I'll put an image up here to how it looks in most listings. They just pretty much reuse the same listing picture. And not bad. Not bad at all. Of course, the eyebrows and nose detailing are a little light, but it's the Adam West Batman. Okay, let's continue. So here we are with version 2.0, using the same compression tights, chest sticker emblem, but the new mask, the new cowl I just showed you. And it works pretty well. Can't really notice the cape yoke too much. You can see it here in some profile pictures. So it was fairly comfortable. And once again, here's all of it in action. Here's a close-up, still using the old gloves, the Ruby's belt. So a little bit later down the line, I decided let's go ahead, bite the bullet, and pay for a nice Chuck Williams Batman, TV Batman cowl. Most cosplayers are familiar with this. Chuck uses not just the original designs that the TV show used, but he tries to replicate the original materials, colors, dyes, everything. So let's take a look. As you can see, just like Adam West's original cowl, it unsnaps along the neck. Let's put that over there. And just like the original TV cowl, of course, it's a hard shell with the fabric wrapped around it, a place for the ear ear holes on the side. The shell ends here at the base of the skull. Very durable. Now, don't be shocked, but you see I made some modifications for the fabric on the side to kind of pull in when I wear it. Because in this case, 
this is a little bit big for my head. In fact, to keep it in place, I made some, uh, added a little bit of padding in the top and the rear so that it fits just right. This little tab of foam I put in the back so it, the whole mask is pushed a little bit closer to my features. And a little bit of a uh, foam strip here to bring it up a bit on my, on my head. But a very high quality cowl. I'd recommend it. Very exacting in every way to the TV series cowl and mask. All right, let's take a look at the cowl being worn. Okay, you're probably asking what the heck is that he's got on? Well, this is what is left from the Ruby's mask and cowl. I cut it up because, because the uh, TV cowl is so big, there's a little bit of gap at the neck that you see, and this just covers that area under the chin. And plus gives me a little protection, a little bit of uh, a zone there for comfort. But of course the cowl slips on just like in the show. Pull it down and adjust it in place. And then of course these three snaps are snapped into place. With the cape of course fitting just like on the TV show over the neck, over the trapezius and shoulder area over the trapezius and neck area around the clavicle. But a really good fit. You can see this is the area I was speaking of right here. It's now covered. Very comfortable. You can hear just fine with those ear holes cut out from the interior shell. Extremely comfortable cowl. Doesn't slip. Of course the Padding I put in, of course, brings it closer back to my features, lifts it a bit so it fits just where it needs to fit. Good profile. I'd recommend it highly. And again, if I haven't flashed Chuck's ordering information, I'll put it right up here. But highly recommend it. He also offers various other parts of the costume, the utility belt, some props, even do-it-yourself patterns and plans, Robin materials, things like that, anything you can name for Batman, he's pretty much got. I hope this is not rubbing the microphone too much. If so, I apologize, but a wonderful, high-quality Batman cowl. And yes, I can do the Adam West impression, so listen. I thank you for your very kind attention. Well, if you saw my earlier how-to video tutorials, I covered Spider-Man and 70s Bronze Age Batman. And you notice I actually created in Photoshop uh, the bodysuits, the Lycra spandex bodysuits, had them printed at a nice firm overseas called Zentai Zone to my specs. And I did the same thing with the Batman costume. Now when I started, I figured, you know, Adam West is just basically a gray costume with the insignia added, all the other items, the gloves, the trunks, etc., are accessories worn over. So I went and I got just basic gray compression suits, compression workout pants and top. And that worked fine. As far as the logo, of course, there's companies that make these nice durable, just like on the TV show, these are durable, thick, kind of vinyl bat stickers for the chest insignia. But after a while I said, let me let me make my own printed bodysuit with the insignia and printed on it because it's hard to wash a suit like that with the chest insignia. You have to look out for that and not get it wet and wrinkly and all that good stuff. So I finally went and did that very thing. Let's take a look right now at that design right now. So again, here's a look at the compression tights using the sticker. Made it very difficult to wash, having to watch out for that insignia. And here is, I guess, version 3.0. A mix of the Ruby's costume, compression tights, the Chuck Williams cowl, but still using the sticker insignia. Finally, here's my own design sent overseas to Zentai Zone for printing. 
Everything, including the insignia, is just one print on the Lycra spandex bodysuit. Much easier to store and care for. Okay, so here's a look at the suit. And again, it looks like what it is. It's just a gray bodysuit with the 60s Batman insignia printed on it. Once again, when I was designing this, one thing I had to watch out for was that logo. I had to kind of deliberately squash it because I knew once it's on me, it's going to stretch across my frame just like that. So you got to be careful. I know the logo is a bit bigger than the one you see worn by Adam West on the show. And speaking of that, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about how I changed the proportions on this costume. So Adam West was picked to play Batman, not just because of his sense of humor and deadpan delivery, but he was in great shape, much like the comic book Batman, of course. But as you're about to see, the costume did him no favors. Here's me. Adam and I have similar proportions. I'm not as tall as he was, nor do I have his broad shoulders. But here's what the costume did. That heavy cape covered up the broad shoulders, as you can see here, and that neck piece necessitated moving the logo down almost to the middle of the chest. Combine that with a thick belt that created the illusion of being thicker waisted, a belt worn high, it all created kind of a chubby squat look. Here's my modifications. The insignia is worn high, the belt's worn low. Gives a feeling of length, makes you look a little taller, slimmer. All done deliberately to be a bit more flattering. Okay, let's look at the cape. It's pretty much modeled after the one used by Adam West on the uh, show. Same type of clasps and everything. You notice some Velcro areas where it Velcros, just like on Adam's costume, to the shoulders, the back. That was always to keep it in place during action scenes. And when he would be seated, you notice on the back I've got it flapped over and Velcroed in place. Again, like Adam's cape, just to keep these side panels from falling down in front of the figure, around the shoulders. Of course, it's got the uh, the famous scallops. And I think this is actually made a bit longer. There we go, yep. I see you. I think I actually had this made a bit longer than the TV cape, just uh, for dramatic purposes. That's one thing I like about cosplay. You can do little adjustments like that. You can do bits of customization, whether that's to fit your own form better, your size, your height, your weight, or just to do those things where you would look at them and think, if I was doing that, I'd do this differently for this reason. Or it would just look better this way. With cosplay, you can do that. You know, who's going to have a problem with that? Well, I say that, but you put these pictures online and there are people that have a problem with that, but we're not gonna talk about them. All right, let's look at how the cape attaches in relation to the cowl. All right, once again, let's mask up. never gets old. We've got our snaps in the front. Let's grab that cape. And again, just like on the show, the cape is going to come around. Always hard to do without a mirror, but it's doable. I wanted to bring it around on the neck. In this particular case, I've got two snaps, two snaps up. No, I'm kidding. And just like on the show, it fits over the actual neck yoke area, just like that. And again, this Velcro would attach to some shoulder couplings. The other portions of the Velcro I have on the printed bodysuit. Sometimes you have to worry about some bunching around the neck, but as long as you keep things pulled down under the cape, you get a good profile and a good look. And like we talked about with the proportions Adam would wear, or the costume people would have him wear, 
The cape right here covers up a lot of his shoulder width. But it works for the overall look of the character. And I know the blues don't exactly match due to these accessories being made before I had the Chuck Williams cowl in my possession. But it's all pretty cool. Let's talk about the belt. The belt I'm using now is, of course, the Mattel Batman utility belt. You can still find it, I think, on Mattel's site. I got this when they had a 50% sale on the belt because I was using the Ruby's costume belt, which is very nice. Very nice. It's not quite up to this standard of quality, but you got to give them credit that Ruby's belt did the job. Now, of course, this fits a lot of different sizes because you're given a lot of size options for buckling. I like to hit that very first set of buckles and make it really tight, but you know, no matter how big your waist is, you're pretty much covered here. You got a nice shiny metallic belt buckle like on the show. Yes, the pouches do open, just like on the show, they open from below, they're gravity aided. Just like that. I like to keep in the, uh, the pouches, if I can get them out here. This is hard to do with bare hands. You can imagine doing this with gloves. I like to keep the Batman trading cards I give to kids who meet Batman at appearances. A little bio on the back of Batman, not me. And these pouches are great for holding such things. And if you want to, you can even keep your Bat credit card in there, citizen. It's up to you. One thing you'll notice that I customized, now the Mattel belt comes with a very nice Batarang, a folding Batarang, and I made my own Batarang pouch using just foam. And you can find these plans online too. I modified these a bit. Oh, also the vials open and close. It's great for keeping sweet tarts and little mints inside. All right, I'll stop with the Adam West impression. But yeah, the Batarang fits just right. Great Batarang that was included, just like on the show. Unfolds. And refolds. Easy for me to say. For easy storage. Back into the pouch, if you so desire. Or you can just keep this behind you, tucked into the belt, hidden by the cape. But again, it is the, uh, the Mattel utility belt. Highly recommended. Very well made. Okay, let's talk about the gloves. I had those custom made. Here is the original glove I had made by a local seamstress, which was fine. The, uh, the fins are a little puny. And... Uh, when I first commissioned this, she actually put the fins on backwards. Can you believe it? Blasphemy, right? So I had a new set of gloves made, and they kind of go the opposite direction. The fins are a little bit big and cartoony, just a wee bit. But I kept instructing the seamstress to, you know, give me some room where I can wrinkle the glove, just like the TV show version. So there's all this extra room up here that you can push down to create that wrinkled up version, that wrinkled up look. So pretty good stuff. And this material is fairly easy to find at any Walmart or any fabric store. And the same seamstress used that material to make the trunks. And she made the cape. Now for the boots. Just like for my 70s Batman cosplay, I just did an eBay search for Batman boots. Came up with these. I originally had much shorter boots that matched the Adam West boots, which probably come right about here. I just didn't like that look on me. I know it's more authentic to the TV show, but these are plain black Batman boots. 
from eBay, you know, 30 bucks, and a ton of metallic blue paint, which you can see often scrapes off a bit. I remember joking with someone that I did an outdoor appearance as Batman, and uh, half the paint from the boots was left on the field. But, really good boot. Nice little point on top. Not a lot to it. Now again, I tend to get these a little big. I put little um, cushions inside so my feet don't quite swim in these giant boots. But does the job. Okay, let's take a look at the final version of the costume as it now stands. Printed bodysuit, Chuck Williams cowl, nice gloves, trunks, cape. Very satisfied with it. And I know those tall, thick boots are not the kind Adam wore, but I just like that look. Getting a bit dramatic here. As a cosplayer, you must always take advantage of dramatic lighting. Fun on a playground. Here's a modified Mattel utility belt. Hello, this is Batman speaking. What is it this time, Commissioner? No, I do not store the cowl with the rest of the suit like this. It's stored separately to keep it nice and protected. Again, not 100% like the TV Batman costume, but I'm happy with my modifications. So it's a lot of fun portraying TV Batman. It's kind of funny, I run into people at conventions or appearances my age, you know, men, you know, in their 50s or older, and they stop and give me such a reverent look. You know, they have so much respect because this was their first Batman. And as corny as it was, this Batman was about teaching morals and respect and good citizenship. Yeah, with a wink and a nudge, but still. So it's interesting I get that reaction that I don't get with the other cosplayers. The other cosplayers are just, oh man, that's cool. This comes with that certain something extra. And I get complimented on, oh, you've got the smile, you've got the delivery. You know, and that's really, really quite nice to hear. Um, I have been at shows with Adam West and Burt Ward. I really don't bother them, or didn't bother them, when Adam was alive, of course, with the costume. Because, you know, they have to be besieged by cosplayers, or were. And I thought, you know, what's the big deal? One time at a Charlotte, North Carolina show here in my backyard, I rounded a corner and came nose to nose with Adam's longtime manager, Fred Wastbrock, who also sadly is recently deceased. And he just stood there going, that's the most amazing Adam cosplay I've ever seen. So that was a big compliment, because you know he's seen a ton of Adam West cosplays in his 30 years of being Adam's manager. So it's very gratifying. There are things I like better about some of my other Batman cosplays, especially if you want to get across that creature of the night thing. Some look better on me, some are more dramatic, some are this or that. But I try not to forget this Batman represents fun and he represents just having a good time. And he represents in a way the 60s comic book look of Batman. And that's a lot of fun. And that's what all this should be. And like I always say, have fun with cosplay no matter how much you've got to spend or how much time or what resources you have. It's all about you just having fun your way in a creative way that's different from drawing or painting or anything like that. Although those skills come into play with this stuff. So thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. If I can answer any questions, contact me through the comments, what have you. I'm going to try to have some information up here about seeing my other videos. I know sometimes those show up on certain platforms on YouTube, like on desktops they're fine, but on laptops they don't seem to show up. But just keep creating, stay safe, and this is Al Bigley saying thanks for joining me. If you want to see more of my fun cosplay tutorials, just check out my YouTube channel.
Want even more Batman 1966 fun, good citizen? Just click the above link to see a fun Bat video starring me, the Caped Crusader.